morning, good afternoon. This is Benjamin from Divine Africa Tours. Every year in June in South Africa, it is a national holiday. It's the June 16 holiday, and it has been dedicated to the youth of South Africa. So as a youth who is leading a company in tourism, we decided to embark on an educational tour for the students who are studying tourism. We partnered with our collaborators in tourism. For example, the company that is supplying us with the vehicle is Inyad Tours and Safaris. Then we are here standing at the Zaid Smoker. They are also part of the initiative. From here, we're gonna do the museum tour. Then we head to the Hrut Constantia Wine Estate, which is the oldest wine farm in South Africa. They also partnered with us. So in support of our youth, this is what we have decided to do free of charge so that we uplift and we educate them and give them the benefit of being in tourism industry. So join us as we lead the way. And if there's anything that you need to know because you're a student, she was a student a few years ago, maybe you can also get tips from her how to maneuver and get to where she is now. But otherwise, other than that, I'll leave it to Insaf then to take it from here. Then I'll see you when you guys leave when I hand you your, your posters and stuff. Good morning. Um, welcome to Life Walker. If it's okay, I think we'll begin in the eighth year old just to kind of give us context um, of the space and its history and the architecture. Um, so if you haven't been here before, welcome. If you have, have welcome back. And if you want to see it, you can get on through to basic table. But it does give us a difference of scale, and if you don't know the history of the space, it's used to be a grain silo, um, and so ultimately a machine that would hold and preserve grains for the distribution would be now markets and ports. And again, not the highest point in the building, the highest point is actually on the hotel side, standing 57 meters above sea level. So each silo bin was meant to hold about 120 tons of grain, and there were 42 of these in total, um, and so a large kind of holding capacity. And the stairwell was made to because it was kind of part of the original structure built in 1921, which is that context as well. Um, but it was made offsite in segment pieces, so from landing to landing would have been a piece. And then it was brought from above down into the silo bin, kind of like a puzzle piece put together piece by piece, um, reinforced the place and then walking the ground up. And it was very labor intensive. And it was also made to look as if it was kind of a machine component. And so it's supposed to be like a drill bit coming down to the side of it, speaking to the mechanization of this building, the primary use of it. And from this point, you'll be heading on into the tunnel system. that brings you coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you have the pink house suite yourself, uh, 180 degree view of the harbor um, and the uh, sewers and yeah. It's an amazing space. Your dreams, space. Your, your dreams when you're sleeping as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's laden in gold. Thank you. 
Singapore and that's when you start functioning as a silo. And so this year, the building will officially be 100 years old. In September, please come back for our heritage kind of celebration. I hope so. I, I genuinely hope so. Um, I'm not really sure about the budget for each individual, but I think it was about 3 million rand um, the entire project, which is a very, really, really small budget for this kind of project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so this is me saying I'm going to this country. That is really that's very cheap yeah. for what it is and what it was to come yeah. to this year. There's six rooms in total, but the fifth floor doesn't exist as a floor. Um, so we kind of consider. Sorry? That is our HVAC system. Um, and so, because this building was a closed mechanized system, it doesn't have proper airflow. And so, we had to kind of implement the airflow throughout. And that forms part of our wind, basically. Okay. And that filtration system sits on the top of it. And so, it's not accessible to the public. These panels can get lost. Yeah. Not really. Um, they all lead back to here eventually. So, you could. I don't know. So, no, but you want to. It sounds a little scary. It seems like. It is a bit scary. Um, and also, just to give you a little bit of context, these tunnels were a lot smaller and narrower when the workers were within the space. Um, and they were closed off when they were dark. The educational tour is continuing. The ladies just got their beautiful goodies from Zaid Smoker Museum. Are you guys happy? Very happy. You see, they got some goodies from Zaid Smoker. Now we're getting ready for the wine. Wow. Is that you need 
to get the understanding of the foundation of these regions so you know that when you go to Stellenbosch you understand where the wines are coming from or where the vines will started from so this is the mother of all the wines so we have the longest wine route in the entire world it's called route 62 if you have heard of route 62 it starts from Stellenbosch and it goes all the way into Garden Root region in a town called Old Soren. 400 kilometers long of wine farms. You, you see how, 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 how great the wine region of South Africa is. 400 kilometers. You, you get it. So wine in South Africa is a big industry. I believe 70% of the wines are sold outside the country they export because it's bringing a lot of money in the tourism industry yes so all these tourists who are coming they want to try the south african wine so wines have actually south african wines have now dominated in the world because people have been wanting to go to Napa valley in america mm -hmm. to italy to france to to drink the french wine but they've now realized that no the french wine is just overrated south african wines are more good and more affordable so they, when they come here, they want to see the difference. Mm. So they are no longer drinking the wines for the fancy type of experience. They want to drink the wines because they enjoy the wines. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. It's no longer, I'm in France, I'm drinking French wine. Uh -uh. I'm drinking good wine. So South Africa is producing the best. So we have our own type of grape, which grows only in South Africa. Do you know that grape? The typical wine grape that was... Uh, uh, created here. It's called Pinotage. Pinotage. It's a red wine. Uh -huh. Only that is the only grape that is indigenous to South African soils. It was created here. arrived at the Hrut Constantia wine estate, the oldest winery in South Africa, over 330 years old. So the guys are going to do a tasting, a cellar tour over here. And after we're heading to the Simon van der Steel house, which is now a museum. Ross is one of the students with me here, and he's looking forward to the tasting. Can you tell us a little bit of how far you have now learned and on the tour? I've learned uh, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Well, we learned about how Simon from the Cell came yes. in the 1600s yeah. and um, set in the place as the first Dutch governor appointed by Andrew yeah. Crown. And then how you know, he started to grow and fail because they had no knowledge. Yes. So they ordered some French men in from the fr fresh from the revolution. The French Revolution, yes. Uh, set them up in, in France. Yes. And then asked them to help them out with the uh, wine making. Wonderful. Smelliation. Wonderful. So that's the reason why we decided to bring uh, students like those, because these are the future leaders in tourism. So he's here with us. He's not just here to test the wine, but they're acquiring the knowledge. Giving, uh, which they are getting from myself, the people working at Cruz Constantia, at every place we're going to. So it's an advantage, and since it's the youth month, I'm a youth, he's a youth. So we're building this together. So tourism is, is an interesting thing. So we're also giving a picture that tourism is beautiful. You can still do a lot, you can learn a lot, and you can still enjoy. So yeah. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah.
the governor of the Cape was granted all of this land, okay? Um, he was granted this land by the Dutch East Indian Company. His name was Simon van der Stau, and he was here with his family. He had two sons and a wife. And he was the first person to actually start planting vegetation, fruit, and they say he then got vines um, that he started planting. He got his vines from French people um, that were coming to buy here in, in Cape Town. And uh, they say he planted about 70,000 vines, which gave him about 5,600 liters of wine. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> that is the wine he sold to the locals around Constantia. His business grew very well and he started selling wine. <laughs> It's the Sauvignon Blanc. We, we use all of them, okay. but the most um, dominant one is the Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Any questions? No questions? just on its own. It's one of those summer wines next mm. to the pool on a hot summer day. Yeah. It gives you a beautiful nose of strawberries, melons, some lemons and lime. And it is 13%. Okay. Okay. Let's go on a cheers. Wow. For me, I'm, I'm spilling some grass. Mm. I can definitely get the lime that he was talking Yes, so you have to pick something. Your nose are active. Yeah, me too. Mm. Yeah. So these are your refreshing ones. Yeah. So your rosés, your sauvignon blanc. Then you get your chardonnay, which are wooden, which are your fruit wines. So this one is 13% alcohol. 13.5 actually. Um, but beautiful, and this is what we are known for in this band. The yeah. sauvignon blanc. Drink. And uh, this one won Best Sauvignon Blanc in the World in 2019. And currently we are, well, the okay. we just took off the stickers. We actually won, this is um, top 20 best in the world. It's worth it. And which, uh, which competition is that? So it's an international um, competition which happens in Definitely. England. Yeah. Um, What's up, like, Hi. 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 Cheers. Cheers. To the freaking weekend. Okay. So this, this, this is <laughs> so this is our second wine, which is a Sauvignon Blanc. We still yes. have the Crude Constantia wine instead. So who can tell me what's the experience so far? What was the your expectation when it comes to the wine? The, it was really great and romantic, mm. actually. Mm -hmm. and romantic, yeah, because, <laughs> because, <laughs> because um, it makes me feel fall in love with myself. Yeah. That's what I mean. Uh, like fall in love with myself. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, and it's almost like I went to another country. Mm -hmm. yeah, Wonderful. And then, way. what is your advice or 
to other youth since he's the youth man and those who are interested in exploring the wine region and learning about this what's your advice what's your um, my advice to the people mm. is that um come and taste this wine it's really great but you need to be responsible and stick to your principles okay that's well, okay. all right and remember though Whoa. if you're under 16 don't That's a great thing. That's so my advice, man. That's the second class. Because I've been to several wine farms, but I've never actually done the wine tasting and learned about, you know, the wines. So my, my advice to young people is take time and learn and ask questions so that you know what you're drinking. And very much thank you to Divine Africa. Yeah. For tours and travel. For arranging this. For oh, arranging this for us. Yeah. Yes. It's the best tour company out there. Wonderful. Oh, yes. wow. Cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you need to get the world when you can get all of this? <laughs> It's much better. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely not my first wine tasting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the best, I must say. Uh, I really enjoy this wine. Uh, my family has some history with the farm. Yes. So I've uh, been able, able to enjoy the fruits of my family's labor. Wine number one. That's fabulous. That's your Yeah. So that's Jesus. <laughs> so there are five S's when testing any type of wine. Okay. The first stage when the wine is poured in a glass, when the wine is poured in a glass, is to hold here, swear the glass. You are actually awakening the aromas and the flavors. <laughs> After that, raise your glass to your nose. Smell the wine, pick the flavors, then hold on to the flavors. Third stage, sip. Salivate and swallow. How was that? Wow, that tastes different from the first one. It makes Very it so much better. Yeah. Really so, do you know with the five senses that is human? Smell, taste. The glass of tea, yeah. It works out, it, it actually works out together. Do you know that? It's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's the last peanut that you were talking about. You see now the, 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 the color has just changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, oh. I, now you're not ah, speaking. Ah, no, the last one. Last one. Bring me some uh, non alcohol. Oh, that's juice. Yeah, I'll take the wine. Yeah. Okay, so guys, pinot noir, nice and fruity. Um, you get a beautiful nose of berries and plums. It drinks beautifully with your biltong, your bride meat. Mm. 14 months in French oak and 14% oil. Who tells you that's what I am? Maybe biltong. Isn't that what I mean? Mali. Mali. That's what I don't know. Oh, so we have to. We don't sell any food here. Yeah. Um, your first, you, you, when you first nose it, it gives you that kind of feeling. Yeah, at least stay away from your, your blankets and your TV. At least we, 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 came we, up, we went off like miles in far from food. Yes. Good experience. Can I come on? <laughs> <laughs> you can come on board. If there is time with you, you can come on board. Because this is really nice. And it's cold. I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. I will do this.